And joining me now is Democratic pollster and NBC News political analyst Cornell Belcher and American Enterprise Institute senior fellow Danielle Pletka. Thank you so much for being here. So Cornell, um, I want to start with you. We got this report. It's long. There's a lot of stuff in it. What do you think is the significance of it, especially at this moment, as, of course, Congress is going to change hands, but we're also still thinking about what happened that day. You know, an excellent reporting by 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 our, by our folks there. Uh, but I don't know politically how much how much changes, right? Uh, Mitch McConnell was, and that you know, Mitch McConnell's out here saying that that you know he's diminished. Uh, and it, and it, I sort of said it wasn't the criminality that diminished him. It wasn't the misogyny. It wasn't the bigotry. It wasn't trying to overthrow the elections that's diminished him in the eyes of of Republicans like Mitch McConnell. It's the fact that he's now seen as political uh, as a liability for them to to, to win in the win in the future. Uh, so I don't know how much more. Uh, is going to change politically. And as you pointed out in your excellent reporting there, is that, you know, the House is now in the hands of Republicans. So I don't think they'll do much or move on with this. And and look, we'll see if the, what the DOJ does with this report, if they, in fact, bring any charges. But it's clear that Donald Trump will not have the, the ability to clear the field uh, in his run again for president and 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 the, and the, on the on the on the primary side, I think that's the biggest news that comes out of this is that I think you have a, now a lot more folks are going to be open to jump in this race in this primary race and take Donald Trump on because they because they see and smell blood in the water. And Danny, keeping with the topic of Donald Trump, the committee, it was very direct in its report. It says, quote, the central cause of January 6th was one man, former President Donald Trump, who many others followed. None of the events of January 6th would have happened without him. So I wonder, you know, you're hearing Cornell there saying this might not mean that the, that the field isn't going to be cleared by Donald Trump, that he might not have the same power in the party. But I wonder what you think it means for the Republican Party as you're hearing Mitch McConnell not play nice anymore. But there is, of course, still the base and a lot of Republican voters who are backing Donald Trump. So, uh, terrific questions. I, I, I have to disagree a little bit. Mitch McConnell has been at daggers drawn with Donald Trump for quite a long time and has been the target of his extremely nasty barbs for, for some years now. It was he who really first called out some of the uh, subpar candidates that were that ultimately lost the Republicans the Senate in this last midterm election. What does this mean? You know, I, I have to say, a lot of Republicans expressed concern about the way the January 6th committee was constructed, about the role that Republicans played in it, and what is fascinating to me is if Donald Trump had behaved properly, decently, in the two years since, if he hadn't hosted Nick Fuentes and Kanye West at his house, if he hadn't questioned setting aside the Constitution, then perhaps there might have been more receptivity to the criticism of the January 6th committee's report. As it is, however, I think you both rightly suggest Donald Trump has become an albatross around the neck of the Republican Party. And the real question, I think, is going to be actually strangely in the hands of the Democratic Party, right? Donald Trump is the best asset the Democratic Party has. People can't stand him. Suburban women can't stand him. He picks loser candidates who lose elections. The Democratic Party spent tens of millions of dollars boosting those losers, hoping they were going to get defeated in the midterm. So I think a lot of this is in Merrick Garland's hands in the Department of Justice. And I don't envy him at all. I think this is going to be a big, big challenge for DOJ in the coming year. And I think most of the eyes, as you asked, Yamish, uh, are going to actually be on DOJ, not so much on the 2024 presidential race. Uh, it's it's a it's a definitely something that people are going to be watching at, at the DOJ. Uh, Cornell, you followed, of course, the 2022 midterms, and we all look for for your data and analysis. I wonder if all these losing, um, all these losses that we saw in the midterms, if that's going to have that sort of impact that you were just talking about in terms of making Trump sort of um, be even less likely to have a big influence on the Republican Party. And if so, what's that mean for Democrats? Because and, as Danny said, Democrats, based on our own reporting here at NBC, they want to run. A against Trump if he's on the ballot or if he's not. 
Well, I, I think you have a lot of baby Trumps out there. I mean, look, <laughs> we might want to blame Trump for 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 the for the really sort of the, uh, historically bad uh, midterm that Republicans just had, but it's Republican primary voters that picked. Uh, Walker. It's Republican primary voters who picked Kerry Lake. It's Republican primary voters who picked Oz. It's Republican primary voters who 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 picked all these candidates who who Mitch McConnell rightfully pointed out are 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 tough to for 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 middle of the road Americans uh, to to stomach. Look, and if you look dive deep into the midterm elections, you know what, to me one of the biggest problems for Republicans was that, like they are just. Absolutely, getting killed among moderate voters. That moderate middle swath of the electorate, which is also is often dominated by by by, by women voters, uh, it makes it it makes it very tough for them. The problem is, even if Donald Trump is gone, who comes out of Republican primary? Is it in fact going to be still a lot of the Kerry Lakes and a lot of the other uh, Trump-like candidates? Uh, who who come out of the Republican primary? Because again, it wasn't Democrats who were picking this, these candidates. It was in fact the Rep Republican primary voters. So that's the, really the million dollar question. And Danny, that's a big question for Republicans because you do have these primaries where Trump backed candidates. They can win in the primary and then they'll lose in the general. So how is the Republican Party going to try to balance this if they if the primaries still continue to be dominated um, by Trump backed candidates? So. Uh, these are all the big questions of the next two years. Uh, I'd love to have the answer for you right here and now so we could have a long extended nap, but I, I don't. You're, Cornell is right. Uh, primary voters were extremely important. Primary voters in both the Democratic Party, Cornell has taught me, in both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party tend toward the more extreme uh, rather than the, 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 actual, uh, the actual election itself voters. And so what we need to see is different candidates. I do think it's important to understand that you can split out all of the terrible aspects of Donald Trump from people who want to challenge how immigration is being handled, how inflation is being handled, how crime is being handled, how education is being handled. Those are issues that Republicans should be able to run on if they want the litmus test for voters to remain, ooh, the 2020 election was stolen, then the 2024 is going to look a lot like 2022 for Republicans. And that's the choice before them. Republicans have to want to win. They don't, they, if they want to stand on what they view as the principle of 2020, then they're going to keep losing. And Donald Trump has helped Republicans lose three elections, 2018, right, 2020, and 2022. If Republicans haven't had enough, shame on them. Well, that's a strong message, Danny, and one that is one that I think we're going to be talking about for the next couple of years. So thank you so much, Danny and Cornell, for coming on. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.